Hello, everyone. So nice to be with you. Thanks for showing up. I really enjoy our time together. A number of years ago, I used to raise parrots. I remember I brought a little baby parrot home from the pet store. And it was around Christmas time. And I was doing some work on a desk with some Christmas cards. And this little baby parrot was sitting on the desk next to me. And I noticed at one point that the parrot was um, breathing very closely to this little silver foiled card. And I could see the condensation from the parrot's breath onto this card. And I took a moment to pause and consider that this, this little creature had the breath of life breathing through it. And I realized that and everything that lives has an element of God, of life force that is animating it. And in that sense, all of life is holy, it's sacred, because God is expressing through everything that lives. The great author Miguel de Cervantes, author of Don Quixote, said, take a deep breath of life and consider how it should be lived. So today I'd like to talk with you about breathing more deeply, not so much literally, of course, that's important too, but breathing our life to the fullest. I was in a health food store checking out and there's a lovely young lady checking me out. And I noticed that she had a tattoo on her arm. It looked like a graph. And I asked her, what is that? She said, well, I was very close to my grandma and we were at the hospital when she was passing away, and I saw her take her last breath, and she expired. And afterward, I asked the nurse if I could get a copy of the printout of her EKG that was monitoring her. So I took the printout of her last breath, her last heartbeat, and I had it made into a tattoo, and it's on my wrist now. So she said, I realized that my grandma is always with me and her heart is always with me. Quite a beautiful statement, isn't it? So it might do us all well to just step back for a moment and ask, are we allowing our days to be filled with life? Are we respecting the life in our relationships? Or are we getting distracted? I know I get distracted a lot. I think we all do, especially with our phones and technology. It's easy to sit and talk to your phone instead of be with, be with the person. And, you know, the more I go on in my journey, the more precious my relationships are. Uh, when I was a teenager, I had a wonderful mentor. He was a rabbi. And he was a great influence on my life. He was probably the most positive influence on my life up till that time. And he was like a big brother to me. He took me in. He believed in me, he encouraged me, supported me. He helped me get a scholarship to a Jewish college. And uh, he was just, you know, a blessing in my life. And I went on with my life. We didn't see each other for many years. And then I recently phoned him, and his wife answered, and she reported that he had uh, had dementia. He was quite old by that time. And he was suffering from dementia. And even if I spoke to him on the phone, he wouldn't recognize me. And I felt very saddened about that. But I began to reflect on the times that we were together, and I, I choose to remember him as the vital, alive, happy, fun, big brother. That's what I'm holding in my, my memory. And it made me want to really maximize all of my relationships. Now, we take each other for granted, don't we? Uh, you know, we don't know when a relationship is going to end or something's going to pass. I mean, not to scare you, but, you know, these things happen. And so what if we made it our business to milk every moment? I, I was in Colorado as a teenager and I saw a sign on a, uh, it was like a mural painted on the side of a, an old building and said, touch every moment of love. Touch every moment of love. So I wonder, are we really touching the moments of our, of our, that we love or are we just glossing them over. And you know, even in relationships that are difficult, there is love. In fact, 
if you've seen any of my, I have a YouTube on, on soul contracts. It's one of my online courses, actually. You can go to alancohen.com and find the soul contracts. And we have agreements with people in our life who will bless us and help us, help us advance spiritually. And sometimes they help us advance through joy and play and love. And sometimes they challenge us. And the people who challenge us are loving us and helping us as much as the kinder people because they're forcing us to dig deeper inside ourselves and find a place of love. So the person that bugs you the most is really your greatest teacher. It's easy to love people who are nice to us, isn't it? That's easy. But when somebody is unkind or makes a face at us or <laughs> just unkind, so they're our, they're our teacher. I, I had to see a dentist last year and um, I, <laughs> I went into the office for a consult and the assistant was getting me ready and I'm sitting down. She said, <laughs> why are you bothering me? <laughs> I couldn't believe she said it. Well, I had an appointment. I was paying the guy, but apparently she didn't want to see me that day. So she considered me a bother. So I kind of bristled. Yeah. And I was tempted to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I didn't. I just kept my mouth shut. I said, well, let's see what we can get done today. And then I thought, well, she's my teacher because, you know, it was easy to send people love who are nice to you, but when they're nasty to you, then. So I had to practice sending her love. We ended up having a very nice relationship when I went on there. She was kind. And you know, maybe I caught her on a bad day. We all have our days, don't we? So the game is to pierce beyond the appearance of negation or limits or enmity and to extract the breath of life even in those relationships. I mean, if you can find life and vitality and, and empowerment through a difficult relationship, you've really got it made. Of course, a miracle says that the holiest place on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. Doesn't mean it has to be a hatred, but an upset. So you can turn an upset into a connection. That, that's a real spiritual mastery. So let's take this from another angle now. So lots of people on spiritual path believe that life is about suffering and putting up with challenges and work in your lessons, and that's a part of it. It's just a part of it. But not that many people recognize that all of life is a gift. And everything we see comes to us by grace and by a blessing. And God wants us to enjoy the world. And of course, the miracle says, well, God didn't make the world, so put your head in heaven. And that's all true. But really, I believe that even in the world of form, there are gifts for us. Let me read you a lovely passage from the Course in Miracles here. It says, all things that live bring gifts to you and offer them in gratitude and gladness at your feet. Wow, what an image. The scent of flowers is their gift to you. So God wants us to enjoy the world, the blessings and beauties of the world. The waves bow down before you and the trees extend their arms to shield you from the heat. Wow. You mean that when I find a shady tree to sit under on a hot day, that's God's way of taking care of me and saying, I love you? Wow. And they lay their leaves before you on the ground that you may walk in softness. You mean when something gets easier in my life and somebody comes to help me or I see something magnificent or I feel comforted by something someone says or something I see, that is the universe saying, I love you. I want you to be happy. I want you to enjoy your life. Wow, what a concept. While the wind seeks to a whisper, Round your holy head. You mean, you mean my head is holy? You mean that even though it's a physical thing that is supposed to be just transitory, 
that there's a purpose for my head in this life and, and my body. So what if we did a really potent reframe and instead of complaining about what's not working, keeping in our ten up for the gifts and blessings that are coming into us daily from all angles. I had a friend named Jeffrey, and he was probably the greatest appreciator I knew. Wherever we would go, he'd be thanking people. Thank you for serving us. Thank you to the construction guy for fixing the road. Thank you to the policeman for guiding the traffic on the road. And he was just showering the universe with appreciation. He would express it. He didn't just think it, but he thanked people. He validated people. He acknowledged people. And it would seem as if this was his gift to others. And of course it was, but really it was more of a gift to himself because in delivering gratitude, he maintained a high vibration and the love that he gave had to flow to him to others. So he was blessing himself while he was blessing other people. So what if this week we shifted the lens of our microscope, so to speak, and we started to notice all the gifts that we've been given. We started to notice where life force lives in our life. And I, I've often said I can boil all the spiritual trainings and all the religions and all the consciousness trainings down to two very simple sentences. I said this before, but it's worth saying again. Do what brings you life and quit doing what didn't you. Do what brings you life and quit doing what didn't you. Now, if you grew up in a religion that glorified suffering and sacrifice, you're not going to do that because you think, well, the more I'm suffering, the closer I get to God. But guess what? <laughs> suffering doesn't bring you closer to God. It pushes you away from God. So what you want to do, and you can use suffering to come closer to God because when you suffer, you make a new choice. But it doesn't mean you need to suffer. It doesn't mean you need to go around looking for sacrifice and suffering. That's kind of a perverted path. It's, it's not, a, not a fun life to live. So take a moment now to think about where does my life force live in my life? And you might want to think about this after you watch this video. Take a paper and write something down. Now where, you know, if I had to make a list of the five elements of life that bring me the most life, what would they be? Well, for me, I like to play with my dogs, I like to be with my partner, I like to be in nature, I love to do yoga, I love to write, I love to walk, you know, and there's lots of things that I like to watch funny movies. These are all life-giving elements of my life. And so the more I do them, the happier I am. The other element of the formula is quit doing what deadens you. Well, what deadens you? Well, I don't really enjoy doing lots of emails or spreadsheets or technical stuff. That kind of a bummer. And uh, I don't like being around lots of noise. And to me, that's that's kind of obnoxious. Or I don't like gossip and banter. To me, that's yeah, doesn't doesn't fit in my world. So I've become over many years very acute and keen to what brings me life and what distracts me from life. And I'm getting better and better at choosing the things that bring me life and letting go of avoiding the things that diminish my life force. And you know, it's a wonderful path when you take that. So I invite you to do, to do the same meditation this week until we meet again. Write down what brings me life, write down what deadens me. And then ask yourself, how can I maximize those life-giving elements? Because life is about life. <laughs> it sounds silly, but life is about life. And how can I minimize or eliminate those elements that distract me from life? And, you know, you don't need any other religion or spiritual path. Really, I, I, I'll boldly say that. If you can do more and more of what brings you life and less and less of what deadens you, you're going to go straight to God. You're going to have a heavenly existence, even on earth. You don't have to wait to get to heaven until you die. That's, that's an old myth. You can, you can live a heavenly life, even while you're on earth, by choosing what brings you life. It's real simple, but you know, it takes some practice because we have, it, we have habits and patterns to the contrary.
So remember that little bird of mine? Remember that girl with the tattoo on her arm? Um, you know what? You know, when somebody shows up who reminds us what life is, you're like an angel. Man, speaking of angels, uh, many years ago, I used to work in this health food restaurant in New Jersey. And uh, one afternoon, I stepped out on a break before dinner. And this fellow was walking on the street. It was a side street in a small town. And he comes up to me and he says, you know, my friend, he says, I said, I'm just so glad to be alive. I said, yeah, that's cool. He said, you know, I, I used to be so miserable and so selfish. And I was worried about everything. He says, and then, he says, then spirit came into my life. God came into my life. And I thought he was going to sell me a religion and try to convert me, but he didn't. He just said, I, I just, I just, I'm so happy to meet you today. <laughs> And he said, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I, I feel like my life is a blessing constantly. And he went on for a couple of minutes. And I just listened. I was wrapped because he was very sincere. And he shook my hand. So I said, have a wonderful day. And he, he walked on down the street. And I ran into the store to get my friend I work with. I said, come on, you got to look at this guy. And he had disappeared. He, it was just a moment, you know, that he, since he quit speaking to me, I, I don't know, maybe he's an angel. Sometimes angels actually manifest and they show up in the form of a person who gives you a message so he was an angel he was a messenger of spirit to remind me about the importance of choosing life and i know that you too have angels who come into the light like, they, they may not be you know a miraculous manifestation but when you look in your child's eyes or you play with your dog, or you hold your beloved in your arms, or you read a passage from a spiritual text that opens your heart and lifts your soul. Those are all God reaching you through forms. This is the deal here. Don't wait for God to just, you know, crash and with thunder and lightning to get your attention. God loves us and reaches us and teaches us and heals us through the forms of the physical world. I don't like it when people put down the physical world as Satan or illusion. I mean, yeah, 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 I know. But, but the truth is that this is a place where God loves us, where we learn to love ourselves. And I think one of the ways we can love ourselves as God loves us is to start to appreciate everything that comes to us, even the challenges, Say, thank you, God. The thing that just happened to me, this relationship, this situation, is bringing me closer to life. And life is about life. Let me tell you about two exciting programs coming up. One is we're starting uh, my new webinar series on relationship to relationships. It'll be a six-week series starting in June about how to really maximize your relationships and deepen them and taking the hard ones and making them easy. And just working all kinds of relationships, not just romantic ones, but friendships, family relationships, business relationships, teaching relationships. Relationships are gonna be a really powerful in-depth series. It'll be live and I can interact with you one-to-one -one if you like. So go to my website, alancohen.com and click on the relationship box. And then uh, starting in September, we're having our life coach training. This is a huge life changer for six months where you can learn to become a life coach, either professionally or using these skills in your personal and business life. It's, it, I can't say enough good things about this program. It, it, it's amazing what happens to the students and the people they touch. So go to my website, alancohen.com, and click on the box for that too. So I'd like to close the moment of vision. Take a deep breath with me if you like. Thank you, God, for life. My heart is beating, my lungs are breathing. I'm speaking for all of us now. And there's an element of good that is coursing through me. There are elements of good that come to me from all angles. I have so many opportunities every day to receive life and to give life. So my prayer for today and every day is that I want to be in life to the maximum. I don't want to waste a minute. I don't want to come to the end of my life and say, I missed that and I missed that and I missed that. I want to, I want to be in it to win it, as they say. 
And so please send me every opportunity today to recognize that life is good, that the forms of the physical world are blessings to me, and I in turn can bring blessings to everybody by seeing the best, by being the best, by loving with an open heart. And remember that I'm here for a good and holy purpose. It's the story of our life. And so it is. Thanks for coming. We'll see you again soon.